holding the ocarina. This sounds like a really basic idea, right? I mean, it is if you're holding it in your hands like this. However, the ocarina doesn't have a standardised shape, so even though this sounds really straightforward, there's a chance you might have missed something, especially if you're largely self-taught like I am. So here's an example of me playing the ocarina before I learned some of the stuff I'm about to show you. I'd been playing for about seven years at that point, and I always knew I had the potential to sound okay, but my technique was actually really sloppy in that video, and from performance to performance, I was really inconsistent. So now, I'm actually going to play the same song I just did, but with some of the techniques I'm about to show you. Much more fluent, right? But more importantly, I can actually play like that consistently, like I can just spontaneously perform that way. I'm Alexandra with Pure Ocarinas, and today, not only are we going to iron out your fundamentals for transverse ocarinas, we're also going to introduce some concepts you might not have been aware of before, including the one that really got me playing consistently. Part 1. Cover the holes properly. Okay, so proper foundations here. Let's just make sure you're covering those holes right. A lot of people just starting with the ocarina might still be covering their holes a bit like this. You don't want to be curling your fingers like this or having any tension in your fingers. Think about the surface area of your fingertip. If you're using the very tip of your finger, that's the least amount of surface area you have to work with. So if you start covering the holes that way, the air might escape, and the air escaping like that will cause you to play out of tune. So now I'm going to demonstrate why closing the holes on your ocarina is really inconsistent if you're doing it with a curled fingertip, like that. So here's me doing it properly. However, if you're curling your fingertip, it can be very inconsistent and the air can escape through gaps in the hole like this. If you try powering through with this technique, you'll probably end up tensing your fingers. And even though that might kind of prevent the air from escaping, it's unreliable, and it's a very unstable way of holding your instrument. Now, look how big the inside of your fingertip is. You've got a lot more surface area to work with, so if you apply this to all of your fingers, and then use that to cover the holes in the ocarina, you should find a very natural resting position, and the pad will cover the holes completely, like that. My fingers have found a natural resting position where there's absolutely no tension, so they aren't quite completely straight either, because you can tense it the other way as well. And this also applies to the thumbs as well. They shouldn't be tense like that, and if you're double jointed, they shouldn't be going backwards either. Part two, balancing the instrument. When you take your fingers off to reach the higher notes, you obviously have less to support the instrument, right? But there are actually places you can put these spare fingers to support the instrument as you go into the higher ranges. The most common way of doing this is by putting your right pinky on the tail of the ocarina and pulling in slightly. And this is pretty much mandatory after G position. So on a C ocarina, C, D, E, F, G, the weight of the ocarina starts to shift to the left hand. So by adding this right pinky down here, you give it a plane of balance that allows you to very easily go from G to top C and D while your instrument's in a more balanced position. This is a universal technique for all transverse ocarinas. It's quite intuitive on ocarinas with like an ergonomically designed tail like this one, but if you're on a single chamber, those top notes might still be a bit of a struggle, right? So here's the technique that got me seriously playing more consistently, and it's as simple as adding your left finger vertical to the capello, and that's the capello being the opposite end of the ocarina to the tail. And there's a really simple reason for this. So as we took the first half of our fingers off to get to G, we had to add a plane of support with the pinky. And similarly, as we're going higher, we need a plane of support here so we can get to those top notes correctly. Before, when I was playing in the upper ranges, I was not using this technique. I was actually slamming my right index finger into the neck of the ocarina and starting to curl my pinky around and hold the ocarina like that. So it felt stable in one hand, 
but it meant that I was actually rotating the, it was too much balance in my right hand. So I would rotate the ocarina in my mouth like this. And that was the main cause of my inconsistency, was that it wasn't equally balanced. But you see how by bringing this single spare finger in from the left, it's now completely balanced. I can now hold it with just three fingers in a much more balanced way. So just by adding the right pinky to the tail of the ocarina, you can get up to top C quite easily. And by opening the left thumb hole, you can also get to the higher D. But to open the right thumb hole, you need to add the left finger to the capella. And there's two ways of removing your thumb from this hole. First is by rotating your thumb up this ridge here. And the second is by folding inward like that. And that's a second way of doing that. If you do it this way, it's a little bit less consistent because the weight of the instrument completely shifts. And sometimes your thumb can still trap some of the air so it might not be tuned properly. So this technique is usually superior, but there's use cases for both. And now I'm going to demonstrate both versions of the top three notes. I'm really glad I changed my default muscle memory for playing away from this pinky curling technique because it's got a few disadvantages and the main one that affected me was actually I'd inconsistently cover these holes and that would affect the tuning. But also because this is juggling being the main support of the instrument, my fingers are in a completely different position. So jumping from that back down was really difficult to do consistently. But with the left capella grip, I would go all the way up the top and I can just go straight back here rather than completely shifting the position of my hand. Now when I was first shown this technique I was actually using an ocarina that was designed around this left capella grip but I didn't find it intuitive at all at first. It took me quite a while to get comfortable with it. If you really want to play more advanced songs fluently, especially on a single chamber if you want to play the high-end legato, it's absolutely crucial that you stick to mastering these techniques. Because after all, the ocarina, although without a standardised shape, is a real instrument, and training your muscle memory, or in my case retraining it, will require dedicated time and effort. And that about covers it. If you'd like any further reading on this topic, or plenty of other technical reads relating to the ocarina, check out pureocarinas.com. We also sell really comfortable and ergonomic ocarinas that are really easy to perform these techniques on because the ocarina doesn't have a standardized shape. So if you've been trying to play some of the techniques I described on something like this, you might want to consider investing in something that actually puts ergonomics and sound quality at the forefront of their design. Links are in the description and thank you for watching.